Let the Children March, written by Monica Clark Robinson, illustrated by Frank Morrison. Civil Rights and the Children's Crusade. 1963, January 14th. Governor George Wallace makes an, his inauguration speech calling for a segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. April 3rd, the first organized sit-ins take place at downtown lunch counters. April 12th, Dr. Martin Luther King and other protesters are arrested after leading a nonviolent protest for demonstrating without a permit. May 2nd, D-Day. The Birmingham Children's Crusade begins. By the end of the day, 973, by the end of the day, 973 young marchers are jailed. May 3rd, double D-Day. More protesters are arrested. Most of them are under 18. Commissioner Bull Connor authorizes the use of high pressure water hoses and police dogs to control the crowds. Close to 1,000 are arrested. May 4th through 9th. Protests escalate as more adults join the marches. The jails are at maximum capacity with thousands of young people imprisoned. May 10th, Dr. King and other protest organizers reach an agreement with city leaders that began the process of desegregation. The Ku Klux Klan holds a rally and the home of A.D. King, Dr. King's brother, is bombed. May 19th. The school board expels many of the student demonstrators, but a federal judge overturns the expulsions just three days later. Nineteen sixty-three, Birmingham. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm night. My family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King's speech. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom, his brown eyes flashing with fire and love. Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job, sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders, but this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. I don't have to, I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promise. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like the children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy too, after all, but he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church dressed in our best feet ready. In a silence so loud that all you could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand, we marched. So frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Would I be heard? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd, run from the danger, run from the fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on we marched. We marched, we marched, singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. Hate dogged are my heels at that day, its yellow canine teeth sharp. But courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse or you'll be jailed, the police shouted the first day. Disperse or you'll get wet, the police shouted the second day. Disperse or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day and even more on the second. My children wasn't until the third day. After I sprayed with water hose, 
stronger water stronger than anything I've ever felt. Rough hands pushed me in forward and I fell to my knees. And in the police wagon, I was going to jail. Dr. King reassured my our parents, don't worry about your children, he said. They're gonna be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail for they are doing a job for me. Only, not only for me themselves, but for all of America and for all of mankind. That night crowded into a cell too small. That night crowded into a cell too. Stop! Damn it. That night crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids. We sang, we shall overcome and ain't gonna let nobody turn me round and freedom is coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but we still sang wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day and the next more kids march. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and trouble, but I'm going to walk on. Turn the other cheek, we have been taught. Show love where there is hate. The world watches hate bruised us, but for seven days we walked only in love. The jail swelled to bursting and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story, but we had been heard and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights I stayed in jail some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore. My best dress was ripped, but my smile was wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march is what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change was right around the corner. We felt it like a cool breeze in the Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing in a playground I'd never been allowed to before. Two months later, my family ate dinner where we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made a difference. We children led the way, singing the songs of freedom when thousand strong we came. last part. 1963 continued. June 11th, President Kennedy goes on TV to speak about the civil rights urging Congress to pass legislation. July 23rd, Birmingham officially withdraws the segregation ordinances. August 28th, over 250,000 people descended on Washington, D.C. during the March on Washington, where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gives his famous I Have a Dream speech. September 15th, the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham was bombed by Klansmen and segregationists, killing four girls and injuring 20 other people. November 22nd, President Kennedy is assassinated in Dallas, Texas. 1964, July 2nd, Congress passes the Civil Rights Acts of 1964, which outlaws discrimination based on race, religion, sex, and or national origin. October 14th, Martin Luther King Jr. is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. 1965, August the 6th, the Voting Rights Act ended practices that had barred African Americans from their right to vote. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm gonna walk on.